Hello, and welcome to worship this day when we celebrate the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. We are truly coming to the end of what is the church year, and our lessons will convey the urgency of this message as we walk ever closer to the beginning, the season of Advent. And so let us begin our worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. reading today comes from Amos, the fifth chapter. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light. As if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it. I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies, even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them, and the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The word of the Lord. Our second reading comes from 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, 
so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call and the sound of the God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another by these words. The Word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flask of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all the bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As often happens during my week, um, as I'm preparing for Sunday, a song will come into my head and won't leave it. And so the song for this week is Tom Petty's The Waiting. And perhaps it's on the fringe of your memory, but it goes a little bit like this. The waiting is the hardest part Every day you see one more card. You take it on faith. You take it to the heart. The waiting is the hardest part. So, with this song in our mind, what does the Christian life consist of? You ever wonder what God expects from us? Well, according to Matthew and our parable today, we are told to wait faithfully together or else. Certainly not happy thoughts, that's for sure, but we are dealing with the gospel of Matthew here. And our gospel, we have what Jesus says to his followers as he instructs them as to how they are to live their lives uh, after he has departed from the earth or else. In the gospel according to Matthew, Jesus seems a little bit zoned in here, zoned into judgment and also zoned into some, some words that sound like retribution. And at the, the conclusion of the four parables that are contained in Matthew 24, certain characters do not come off looking all that great or they don't fare so well in the outcome. 
And so they are tossed into placing where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. They are locked out of a banquet by the guy who supposedly invited them in the first place. They're tossed into the outer darkness or punished in eternal fire. There's really no gospel that comes close to calling so much attention to the consequences of our actions. And so we ask ourselves, is there any good news in this? Unless we look at it, that um, it all hones in on judgment. And, um, and whatever judgment looks like for the particular passage. But remember that these passages, these parables speak metaphorically. And judgment is really God's prerogative and not our prerogative. So, basically, it affirms um, that we are to live lives with the virtues that Jesus embodies. So it would be faithfulness and perseverance and readiness, obedience and compassion. So this is why, well, it brings us to why we wait together in the first place, um, which is one of the reasons that I feel the need to go to church all of the time because I need the community around me to help me to work together so that we can, relying on God's help, muster up the endurance and faithfulness that we need because it's very difficult to do this individually. And truth be told, it's hard to really trust our own convictions and motivations. So the parables, as hard as they are, refuse to let us think for one moment that the Christian life equals passiveness. Each parable commands us to be ready, whether that readiness is caring for God's house or meeting the needs of those who suffer. So, our parable this morning really focuses on the question of what it means to live faithfully as we wait for God's intentions to come, to come to full fruition. So the parable about the ten bridesmaids reminds us that Christianity is a waiting religion. We are awaiting the fullness of of the kingdom of God that Jesus has promised. And the Christian life involves waiting with confidence. So the ten bridesmaids are awaiting the bridegroom's arrival when the wedding festivities will finally begin, when fullness will arrive. But the wait is pressing. And it's difficult, as it is with people with very high expectations. It lasts deep into the night. The ten who wait, the bridesmaids, all look the same. They're all bridesmaids. They all were invited to the wedding. They all want to see the bridegroom and join the party. And all wait into the night. Even the five wise bridesmaids fell asleep. None, really, they don't stick out up to in, to this point, and they're not, none of them are specifically or especially heroic. The only dif- difference between the two groups is some are described as wise, and some are described as foolish. So, The five wise bridesmaids took the pains to be completely ready, to do what was necessary necessary while they waited for the bridegroom's entrance. And so 
this is realized in their oil, that they can't prepare with extra oil. Now, the five foolish bridesmaids are not prepared. Um, they did not bother to equip themselves in the manner that is necessary for such an instance. And so they will not be ready to share in the party when the bridegroom arrives and is present. So they find themselves disinvited and locked out. And the bridegroom even claims not to know who they are. What happened? How are we to understand this, especially if we have in our mind that Jesus is, is the bridegroom? But we need the rest of Matthew's gospel to answer that question. For the rest of Matthew's gospel conveys an understanding of what it looks like to live in readiness. Such a life is marked with active waiting as we expect God to make all things new. It's more like eagerly expecting and diligently preparing in anticipation of some great event in the future rather than, you know, standing online, perhaps with our heads down looking at our phones. So despite Jesus' absence, despite the presence of circumstances that cons conspire to rob us of wakefulness and hope, Christians express expectation. They anticipate. And so this is what we pass on to our children. Ch excuse me. Children, they, we are to rely on each other and have our traditions that sustain us and give us life, especially when we are in doubt. And so we actively forgive each other's sins. We actively study the scriptures and we baptize people into a new identity and we share a meal to recognize that God provides sustenance. So these are not um, time wasters or time fillers or rituals that um, are for ritual's sake. They sustain us. They give us life so that when we are tired and fatigued and we have resignation that we sit there and think we can't go on, these things promote our readiness to be sustained by God. But Matthew's gospel, including these troublesome parables, will not allow us to neglect another aspect of waiting. We must live in hope, which prompts us to consider others who experience unfulfillment or absence in their own lives especially the absence of opportunity, the absence of justice, the absence of hope. And so faithfulness or ready waitfulness is about serving the poor, the oppressed, and the outsider. It involves working for reconciliation. So faithful readiness is active readiness. It means saying even though the wedding banquet has not begun, together we will act as if it has. This means opportunity. So where do we see opportunity in our waiting? Where can we make a difference in the lives of others and a difference in this world? There is so much that needs to be done. Faithful waiting actually means more work than the parable may first let on. And so today, I sincerely ask you to answer this question. What does your faithful waiting look like? What does your faithful 
readiness mean for you? What preparations must be made? And in trying to answer this question, may we all be transformed. Amen. Christ reign to come among us. We pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all who are in need. Holy God, rouse us to deep praise as we gather for worship. Enliven our worship with sincere and heartfelt song. Sustain the work of all church musicians and with artists who lead us in praise and prayer. 
Hear us, O God. Holy Creator, surprise and delight us with the beauty of the world you have made. Bless the work of landscapers, architects, and artists whose work invites us into harmonious living with your creation. Hear us, O God. Holy Judge, let justice roll down like waters over this world. Reign over the courtrooms of every land in the hearts of those who guard the law and those who stand accused of crimes. Be present in cases where we long for both justice and mercy to prevail. Hear us, O God. Holy Companion, console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Share the hours of those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have few friends or who struggle with their identity and place in this world. Hear us, O God. Holy Protector, be with all observing Veterans Day. Guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. Heal the wounds both physically and mental and experienced by servicemen members. Hear us, O God. Holy and Immortal One, we pray in thanksgiving for the lives of all who have died. Remind us of the frailty and shortness of our own lives and inspire us to use them for the building up of your kingdom. Hear us, O God. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now, and always. Amen.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord.